Hi all. This is the second part of the um, series I'm doing on the Knights Templars in Burton Dasset area. Um, strangely, this part of the quest, uh, it brings us um, to a village called Langley in Warwickshire, which is not in the Burton Dasset Hills at all. So we've had to make a, a slight detour of um, about 15 miles to come here to have a look at this little chapel. Now this was built in the 1800s and uh, I know what you're thinking, what on earth could a Victorian chapel have anything to do with the Knights Templars who were around in, uh, let's see, early 1100s to the early 1300s. Well, as it happens there was a chap called Jacob Cove Jones who lived in the 1800s, um, died in the early 1900s and he was um, a landowner. Um, with plenty of money and plenty of spare time and also a historian interested in uh, local history especially and he picked up on the story of uh, the Knights Templars being in Burton Dasset and um, he said that it, or rather he told people that he'd found clues in Burton Dasset church leading to treasures left by the Knights Templars that had come from the Temple of Jerusalem um, and that he'd actually found these treasures um, he wasn't taken seriously by the museums and the historians of the day and the archaeologists. They didn't want to know uh, and just laughed at him, basically. Um, so what he did was he had, um, he had a stained glass window made uh, by a friend. He was quite a famous stained glass artist of the time and had it placed in this church, which was newly built then. Um, so although this chapel is 1800s, like I said, um, this stained glass window here um, holds secrets um, or he had secrets put into the into the picture uh, that, that show not in that in that glass um, and there's clues to where he hid some of those treasures that he found uh, that had supposedly been belonged to the Knights Templars um, nice little chapel this actually I quite like Victorian chapels like this. Nice place. Nice little village hall there too. Pretty place. Now you can't really view a stained glass window probably from the outside. Um, over here on my bike I've got a book with the photograph of that window from the inside so we'll take a quick look at it. <coughs> See if I can find the page. interesting story especially as he wasn't taken seriously at the time in order to get his own back really I think he'd he'd, he'd done this and he still wasn't taken seriously even then this is this is what the window looks like from the inside uh, and in there that's a, that's um, the three wise kings uh, Virgin Mary baby Jesus sitting on her lap um, but if you look really closely at that uh, picture. There's all kinds of hidden messages in there. The pictures on the cloaks of the kings, <clears throat> of the wise kings. Um, the fact that one of the crowns is on the floor at the back, the sword is blue, pointing to the ground at a certain angle. Um, there's all kinds of very intricate messages left in there. I'm going to sit down here. And I didn't really take this seriously either. Um, the story broke about this place in the early 2000s and I remember it being on the news at the time 20 years ago. And I still didn't take it seriously, didn't bother looking into it, but I have now and I'm beginning to take it seriously because um, uh, a little while, um, let's see, when would it be, about 2006, a chap called Graham Phillips who wrote this book actually, he decoded the messages that were in that stained glass window followed them and he found three of the items that were supposedly taken from the Temple of Jerusalem and hidden, uh, following the clues in the stained glass window. Um, all three of those were tiny gemstones hidden in various places around Warwickshire. Jacob uh, Cove Jones, by the way, um, he'd left uh, other messages for his um, descendants, and some of some of his descendants did try and find these treasures, but it gave up. They, they just thought it was nonsense, as did most other people. But um, this chap, Graham Phillips, who wrote this this book here, the Templars and the Ark of the Covenant, um, 
actually decoded them, found the gemstones. You can't date gemstones, of course they're millions of years old, but you can find out where they were from. And they were from the Bible land area, you know, the whole of the Levant, as it was called in those days. Um, but he says that, it, well, he certainly thinks that it's a possibility that the Templars also brought back uh, from Jerusalem with them, w with these gemstones, the actual Ark of the Covenant. And that Jacob Cove Jones had found that as well, knew where it was, and has left some kind of message in that window about that as well, which he n he never decoded. So potentially, um, it's still there for us to find, which would be rather good, wouldn't it? Um, don't hold your breath, but uh, you know that's what I'm going to do uh, during this series. We're going to look in depth at, at this story and and these mysteries um, because that's what I do. It's what I love, and uh, I hope you're going to enjoy doing it too. In the meantime. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, look forward to talking to you next time. All the best. Bye-bye.